Shimmyfrenia, and welcome back to my channel. My name's Caitlin Anwin for anyone who's new here, and let's get back into building in Planet Zoo. Today I'm gonna mix it up a bit and do a restaurant and a habitat together. The restaurant is going to be a hard shelter for the striped hyena, but it's also gonna be a lovely restaurant for the guests, and while they sit, they can look over this striped hyena habitat. The first fun fact that inspired me to build this habitat is North Indian folklore suggests that witches and wizards ride striped hyenas at night. And the second one is striped hyenas are known to dig up graves and scavenge corpses, which has led to persecution by humans. I thought I would kind of twine those two together, have the castle be the restaurant and that kind of be where the witches and wizards live, like the wizard lives. I was just picturing one wizard, I don't know why. <laughs> like Merlin's chilling up there or something. And I thought I would do like a little graveyard near this castle for the hyenas, but they're no longer going to be persecuted by humans for digging up these graves. They've got like a understanding with the wizard. So the wizard allows them to live under his castle and he doesn't mind the hyenas scavenging in this like old graveyard because whatever they don't want he can use for his magic spells. So this is definitely more of a twilight themed restaurant than a grasslands themed restaurant but a kind of tying twilight in with grasslands. I haven't branched out on any of the other DLCs, it's literally the whole zoo at the moment is just twilight and grasslands with base game. Definitely gonna be a bit of a smaller castle than the Castel Koch, the fairy castle that I built for the entrance. Castel Koch was built in the 1870s, so maybe this was built in like the 1700s. It's just gonna be like a law behind it. Like this is the smaller castle built before the entrance castle and it's been left. And that's why the wizard just come and being like, I'll take that and I'll make friends with the helpful magic ingredient collectors <laughs> transport striped hyenas. I don't know. I didn't want the hyenas to be the villain because in a lot of like Disney and things like that, the hyenas are usually portrayed as the villain characters and I didn't want that for them. Like they're really cool looking animals. Some of these restaurant tables are gonna have much better views than others. <laughs> Like the two booth tables that are closest to the habitat, they're gonna have the best view. Uh, but I didn't want to just put two tables in an entire restaurant, so I do have a couple more in. I've put some booths on each of the windows. I never quite know what to do with like layout with these restaurants. Like it doesn't matter about like having walking space in these restaurants because the guests teleport to the table. So that doesn't really concern me but I'm never really sure what to do with the tables and we have this like empty tower so I thought it'd be fun to put a circular table in the tower there's no windows <laughs> so I thought it'd be nice for them to have like little TVs to look outside uh, as like a TV window and I linked these to the burrow camera for the red foxes. That was a mistake. <laughs> Later on, I'm gonna come into a little problem with the TVs connected to burrows. So if you wanna find out what happened and how I fixed it, stay tuned, but yeah, would not recommend it's gonna be slightly different to the actual main castle because i've done the roof slightly different as well it's nice just to add these like extra details in without having to spend individual time rebuilding these things because i've built a line to the world axis i can duplicate things really easily have angle snap on and as long as you snap those angles you can always duplicate something and place it onto something else and because I want this building and this like habitat to look a little bit abandoned and a little older, 
I'm using mossy rocks for the like cave rocks. This is slightly odd because I kind of needed to make it look like a cave, have enough space for the hyenas to get into the cave as well and kind of try and still blend it in with the mountain because of course like the mountain itself is kind of rocky and I always check using the heat maps whether the hyena can actually get into the hard shelter so if you go into the heat maps which is in the bottom left corner you can switch that on and you'll have all different categories for the heat maps to check whether a uh, hard shelter is accessible for the animal you're building a habitat for you go into the habitat tab which is the second icon across and then you got a little drop down menu and that drop down menu you can select traversable area and then you just need to select the animal in the habitat the blue shows the traversable area and it'll show whether they can actually walk into the habitat shelter that you've created and if it's blue underneath it the animals will actually be able to walk inside that building the traversable area will also show escape points as well and there's different types of escape points like walkable jumpable or climbable escape points depending on the type of animal you have borrowing a couple of the windows as well <laughs> that I made for the castle it's quite nice because it's just like so easy to duplicate things I wouldn't necessarily necessarily call it cheating but it's just easier to duplicate something you've already created there's actually quite a few things I was like mm, I'll borrow that for <laughs> to add extra details into this building so I added these little supports because I've got the top wall slightly off the grid from the lower wall and that's just by snapping it slightly off the line when you're building walls snap to the grid they'll either be on the inside of the line or the outside of the line so uh you can always like snap it to one or the other so if you snap the bottom wall on the inside of the grid line and then snap snap there <laughs> what was that <laughs> and then snap the top wall on the outside of the line you can have a little bit more of a dynamic building just by using the wall grid pieces and that doesn't necessarily have to be for just the top and the bottom like I've done for this one you can kind of do it as like a side by side thing as well so if you want like one building to be slightly ahead of the other but everything to be on the same grid put one of the like front pieces of the building on the outside of the line and then the other building front on the inside of the line I did that for an Amsterdam inspired canal buildings and I picked these doors to match in with like the castle theme I thought these looked like grand castle doors that you'd see in like a medieval castle maybe I didn't want the inside of the like restaurant to be too plain either where the guests would be seated sitting where the guests are eating anyway so I put some like support beams on the top to kind of take away from the fact that the roofing doesn't look the nicest it's like don't focus on the roof no 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 Look at these beautiful wooden beams and it kind of does work. <laughs> Takes the eye away from like the slightly clipping odd roof texture. We'll ignore that. We'll have lovely wooden beams instead. The way I'm going to age this building is to absolutely cover it in ivy. So nature's taken over. Uh, I thought this was like the perfect way to kind of age a building without adding too much to it and adding anything from other packs into it as well like if I was going to use the Europe pack and add loads of like moss and damage decals I'd love to do that but I'm also trying to make this a limited packs build so I'm going to add IV instead and the variegated IV from the Twilight pack is it a base game thing that was added when the Twilight pack released? I don't know the variegated ivy seems new anyway it was nice to have a, like a little mix of the different ivy types this is when i discovered that i had a problem with the tvs but i didn't know it was the tvs i shit myself <laughs> 
As you can imagine, it's not nice seeing visual glitches on your game. For some reason, when I press play to see these beautiful smoke effects, every tree and bush on this map started flickering. Why are they flickering? I better not lose this entire zoo. I found the answer on Reddit. I'll put the Reddit article, subreddit thread for the Planet Zoo subreddit. I found a solution. And for some reason, this has been an ongoing problem. So if you ever have that problem, if you ever think, oh, wouldn't it be nice for my guests to see this underground burrow with these cute little animals in it? Don't do it. But as soon as you disconnect the TVs, like you delete the TVs, everything goes back to normal. Like the trees no longer flicker. It's definitely that TV thing. Cause as soon as I deleted the TVs from inside the tower, everything was fine. The hyenas are going to be transporting wizards on their backs through a forest or whatever. Just like the, the North Indian folklore on the fun facts. I read it out the first time. If I haven't quite got the wording right, I don't know. But for the road, I used a natural path that paints the terrain with like a dirt to kind of signify like a dirt road. And I kind of wanted this area to seem sort of separate to the castle, but kind of connected at the same time. So it used to be separate and now it's connected because it's been left and like the gates and the fence has been broken down. So the hyenas can get in and out of the castle. But it used to be like a separate graveyard cemetery. And I'm um, creating my own little graveyard. <laughs> Some gravestones out of the different stone pieces from the twilight pack. There's a lot of stone pieces for like the turrets and the de extra decorations that are perfect to create little gravestones out of. Uh, so I had quite a lot of fun trying to make different style gravestones with the different style pieces just to make it like a little bit of a variation and this might be morally vague but remember like this wizard has completely said that it's fine for the <laughs> these hyenas to dig up graves it's a very old graveyard it's older than the 1870s there's no family it's all just decorations the hyenas aren't actually doing this but I wanted to make it look like some of the graves had been actually dug up without it being too spooky. So I used some of the like planter dirt and then the freshly dug ones, a couple of them, I put some food trays in the dirt. So when the hyenas feed and have been fed by the keepers, it'll look like they're eating from the freshly dug bits. <laughs> to add some more like nettles and weeds around the place to make it feel a little bit more overgrown. And I've also painted a little bit of uh, longer grass in the more overgrown sections as well. So like sometimes terrain paint can help blend in some of your foliage to make it feel a little bit more overgrown or a little bit more blended in with some of the different plants. If you accidentally have a line to surface on when you place trees and you've got a tree on a angle that you is not natural for the tree. Press X, advance move, and then if you press C, it will snap it to the world axis. You press X, C, and then X again, you can rotate it around and make it different, but it'll still be a realistic straight up and down tree. As you can probably tell, I had a lot of fun with the law around this one and why it's built how it is. And I was all inspired by fun facts that are in the Zoopedia for the striped hyenas. I'm never really gonna be making natural habitats. That's not my style of building. I really like these mystical ones. And I'm assuming you do too, especially if you've been watching all the way until now. <laughs> if you want to suggest an animal to build a habitat for next for this zoo, let me know in the comments or vote on my community tab for whatever animals from the grasslands pack are your favorite if you want a twilight animal let me know in the comments or a grasslands one 
or even something from base game I don't mind I kind of try to stick to DLCs for a bit <laughs> and if you enjoyed the video smash that like button and if you haven't already and you would like to it would mean a lot to me if you could subscribe and hit the bell to be notified whenever I upload a new video I upload long form videos on Wednesdays gameplay and speed builds and short form tutorials on Saturdays and I'm also on TikTok and Instagram uploading short form tutorials on there too so if you'd like to follow me I have all the links in the description thank you so much for watching I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you next time goodbye